Welcome to another production by the Millennial Mechanical Therapist. Your hosts, Dr. Joseph Gravino and Dr. Clay Case, are two physical therapists trying to treat health issues mechanically. Listen further for patient cases, guest videos, advantages and disadvantages of the way they practice, and much more. Thanks for tuning in today. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and at our website. We hope that you learn a lot from watching this video and you come back for more. Hello everybody, I'm the Millennial Mechanical Therapist and today is part three of post-operative patients that respond to repeated movement testing. So before we had a couple shoulder cases and today is another shoulder case but it's a little bit more unique. Um, one of the shoulder cases was purely shoulder, the other part two had a little bit of both cervical spine and shoulder and today is going to be a little bit different than that. Um, so today's case involves a younger gentleman who had a four-year history of episodic uh, right shoulder pain and now after his uh, he was status post uh, shoulder you know just some arthroscopic work um, nothing you know nothing too specific no decompression nothing along those lines and he continued to have posterior lateral shoulder pain and numbness that went down to the back of his arm that's been unchanging and he's been a couple months out about three or four months out of the surgery and he was going somewhere else he just wasn't you know his range of motion was doing pretty good his function is doing pretty good but he was still in some significant pain so when I saw him his biggest complaint was he can't bring his arm you know bring his arm out bring his arm in it was was really really painful um, and just you know, end range pages up into elevation. Um, you know, nothing through during movement, nothing like that. He had an MRI finding of a torn labrum, and he continued to, uh, you know, harp on those situation uh, on his MRI, uh, saying that you know you can't really do anything for a labrum. Blah 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 blah. You you've had those types of patients once they have their diagnosis or their or their biomedical diagnosis, they you know stick to it like it's their label. Um, and I spoke with him, you know, previously, like I try to do with all patients, about the the lack of evidence that shows that MRI findings correlate with what's causing your pain as well as what can fix your pain. So we go through, and one, the numbness and tingling starts starts making me think that, that maybe this isn't just a shoulder case. So I, I screen his cervical spine and his shoulder. Um, in his shoulder, he had just end range pain in all upper extremity elevation movements um, and just pain during horizontal abduction and adduction. Now, he also had pain with overpressure into forward flexion and pain with resisted external rotation. His cervical spine had a significant loss in retraction and extension, um, so I attacked seated posture first. Um, oh, I also did a neural screen and he uh, had a myotomal loss on uh, the right upper extremity on C6, um, as well as a reflexive loss at C6. So I went in and looked at his spine. I made him do some retractions, retraction with overpressure. Retractions itself centralized his numbness and his pain to the cervical spine. Retraction with overpressure abolished and he had no end range pain with horizontal abduction, adduction, or pain with resistive external rotation. So this is huge for this individual. One, I didn't touch his shoulder besides screening it, but two, he felt his pain rapidly reduce and go away, as well as his huge functional complaint of these types of motions right away in the blink of an eye. I mean, here's an individual who went, who went through, you know, typical conservative care, who went under, um, surgery who had multiple episodes in his past and something as simple as looking at his neck and giving him the opportunity to respond to movement giving him out the opportunity to stay away from those pathoanatomical tendencies and boom um it was amazing i mean the joy and the i think the excitement that he saw or that i saw from him that he was feeding off me it was beautiful together um 
needless to say, I never have to look at this gentleman's spine because he quickly uh, maintained his derangement and continued on within the steps and, you know, going forward. I mean, how awesome is that? And, and, if you, and if you break this down, this case didn't even sound too much like a shoulder. I mean, his shoulder had pain during horizontal abduction and end range pain everywhere else. So I guess he could have been in uh, an articular dysfunction if you're familiar with the mechanical diagnosis and therapy categories or, or some sort of um, capsular type problem. But man, did that sound like neck. Pain, some pain in his shoulder, numbness and tingling. He's had similar symptoms before the surgery and after the surgery, before conservative care and after conservative care. This guy just needed someone to give him the chance to respond to repeated movement testing. Um, time frame, not likely someone who should respond to repeated movement testing, right? He's, he's well beyond acute phases. He's more into the chronic phase. Of, of pain but I wouldn't label him as a chronic pain patient since he easily was able to get rid of his pain and continue on with his life that's what we should be doing with our patients empowering them and having them get back to function as fast as possible my friends this is a wonderful case where you can see how simply these things can be I mean these aren't the flashy cases because it's so simple and I think that's why some people don't like this it's so simple and for this patient I mean, you might not even want to have done that with this patient even if you practice uh, or certified in, in mechanical diagnosis therapy but this person deserved a chance and and sometimes I debate on when I should and shouldn't but I think if I can't convince myself to do it how can I convince anybody else to do it you know pay attention to these guys they're out there and, and obviously I'm seeing more and more of these for some odd reason and that's why I wanted to highlight this. This is huge. So, I mean, just pay attention to these guys. Look for look for the next episode, the last episode uh, of post-operative patients who respond to repeated movement testing. Look for the, uh, I'm going to try and get out a document that shows some of the similarities between the guys. So maybe if you guys could find more out there and let us know. If I can find more that hits this kind of population, let you guys know. You know, stay tuned because we're trying to get more and more out there for everyone to learn and for us to learn. Because that's all this is, is us just figuring this out, winning, losing, and just moving forward and hopefully becoming better clinicians for our patients. I'll get off my soapbox. You know, you guys check us out on Facebook. Look at our website. Uh, move your patients early. Move them often. Move them to end range, my friends, because that's where the magic happens. Until next time.